Congressman Gary Palmer is the freshman rep representative from the 6th Congressional District here in Alabama, kind enough to spend some time with us today. Congressman Palmer, thank you for joining us. We've got a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff that you are involved with in Congress. I want to start with the nuclear agreement with Iran. That's a very hot topic. Uh, a lot of folks in your party, Senator Corker among the leaders here, saying they need congressional review on this deal. What concerns you about what the president and Iran are trying to sign, and what perhaps parts of it would you support? Well, I'm concerned on two levels, and, and for starters, I'm concerned that the president now admits that this will not prevent Iran from, from ever getting a nuclear bomb. Uh, at best, this agreement is good for 13 years, and that's assuming that Iran will honor it, and I don't think they will. I don't think they're honest brokers. Do you think this agreement will hold up to, even without congressional no. review, or do you think it, it can, it'll fall through before here, before June? I think it'll, well, and I don't know about the agreement. I just don't think that uh, the leadership in Iran have any intention of, um, of um, not pursuing a nuclear weapon. Let's talk about something else coming up in June, and that is the expiration of the Patriot Act or the reauthorization of a lot of those uh, controversial surveillance provisions. That's an issue that has not gotten a lot of attention, and we're just a few months away from it. Edward Snowden appearing on TV this week uh, saying that it's something the American public should be discussing more. Where do you stand on some of those provisions, the, the bulk collection of our cell phone data, some other things, that has raised the ire of the public in the past? Would you support reauthorizing all of that, or do we need to come and tinker with some uh, portions of the Patriot Act? Well, we haven't uh, had access to... Um the authorizing uh, legislation, so I, I don't know what's in it. I know there's concerns in Congress about it, and I'll reserve judgment until we've had an opportunity to review it. But is it something you think the, the public should get a good look at in the next couple of months? Because June 1st, this thing is back yeah. up for, for I'm four not years. sure if the public needs to see everything that's in it. Uh, it depends on uh, the, the, how it impacts our, our ability to keep the country secure. Uh, and I, I don't particularly appreciate uh, Snowden being a spokesperson for civil liberties. I think that uh, it, when the final story is written about what he's done, he will have put uh, America at risk himself. But uh, I, I think what we need to do is, is to wait and see what's in the authorizing legislation and then make a determination about what we need to go where we need to go from there, and I think there are a lot of members of Congress that feel the same way. Talk about national security as well. This is an issue I know in your subcommittees you have been looking at. You've, interviewed, you've questioned some people from the Secret Service, including the interim now permanent director, about some of the failures that have happened around the White House. Give me your level of concern. Do you, there's been some efforts at reform. There's been some more agents uh, perhaps in trouble just a couple weeks ago for crashing into that barrier. Mm -hmm. Are we getting any closer to securing the White House? Well, it wasn't just crashing into the to the barrier, there was a package lying in the street that they thought was a bomb and they drove around it. It uh, took over an hour to get uh, the bomb squad to come out and... And, and, and erase the tapes, correct? And then, and then they erased the tapes. And uh, if you listen to the, the hearing, if you saw the hearing, uh, this, this is a, a, an agency that one of the most revered, respected in the history of the country that's in disarray. And it's, it's everything from... Uh, uh, being able to hire quality people and, and make sure they're uh, they're the people that we can entrust the president and his family to. I mean, they, they're hiring. They, they've got a Chinese national who went through the background check and and was hired as an agent, and yet has never renounced her Chinese citizenship. And we we shouldn't have people who hold dual citizenship. This is a a, a major issue. And while I'm disappointed that they brought another insider in to head up the agency. Uh, they're they're going to add a chief operating officer, and they're bringing somebody in from the outside, which I think uh, will help. You know, what does Congressman Palmer think about the state's efforts to reform our prison system? Our second part of this interview continues tonight on Fox 6 News at 9:30. The whole thing will post on myfoxal.com, so you can watch it whenever you like on our app as well. And we'll be right back. It's a start. That's how Congressman Gary Palmer described Alabama's prison reform effort now being debated in Montgomery. In a one-on-one -on -one today, Palmer talked prison reform, but we started by discussing that controversial religious freedom laws on the books in several states, including here in Alabama. Let's talk about a couple of domestic issues now. One of them, of course, these religious freedom uh, laws on the books. I know it's not federal. There, there are, there's a federal one, but mm -hmm. the state law in Indiana has gotten a lot of attention. Um, Alabama's leadership here in your party has said that's probably not on the agenda. Would you support a state law uh, along the lines of what we've seen in Indiana and some other states? Actually, I thought we'd already passed a uh, religious freedom amendment. Perhaps a, a more strengthened one, yeah. And um, when the Religious Freedom Act passed uh, the federal version of it, I think just about all the states have, have copied that. 
And that's what's interesting about this is, uh, and the reason that the states did is, I think there was a Supreme Court decision saying that the federal law only applied to the federal government and not to the states, which um, I think prompted states to pass. Right. Uh, but uh, I think I think we need to protect religious freedom. And, and Jonathan, I don't think it's, we're talking religious freedom, but in this case where it's same-sex marriage, it's really an assault against Christians. Uh, I don't see anyone uh, going in demanding that a Muslim cleric marry a same-sex couple. I don't see anyone taking a Muslim baker or, or photographer to court because um, or threatening to take their business license because they won't participate in a same-sex wedding. It's it's um, pretty much an assault against Christians. So for it to become a war on religion, it's going to have to get a lot broader. Is there a way to protect both the rights of uh, same-sex couples or, or people who are in business who want or need services to uh, allow them to get services while also protecting people who believe they have a religious need not to provide them. Is there a way to sort of uh, to split this issue here and have both sides with the protections that they feel they deserve? Well, I just don't think that, that we ought to force someone who have sincere spiritual beliefs to violate their conscience. I mean, you're literally making, uh, forcing a person to decide between something that they think uh, is wrong, forcing them to participate in something that they think is wrong, or keep their business. I, I don't think that's the way we, and particularly when there are other people who provide the service. And, and, it's, and I think that's what's interesting about this, is that when someone says, I'm a Christian, I don't want to do this, then they take them to court, they threaten their business, when they could just as easily go to another business. In your formal line of work, you spend a lot of time talking about prison reform. That's something that our state is trying to tackle at the state level now because of the threat of a federal takeover. Uh, where does our state need to go to prevent the federal takeover? Uh, would you support some of the legislation Cam Ward has sponsored now that may cost some more money, but would do sentencing reform, would hire 100 more parole officers and so on? Is that the, Do you think they're heading in the right direction? I, I think that's a, a step in the right direction, but I think we need to be a, uh, broader in our thinking about this. If you look at who's in our prison, over 60 percent are high school dropouts and that regardless of race or, or gender they're high school dropouts if you look at just uh, African Americans that's probably 70 percent and a lot of these people who are in prison are in prison for nonviolent offenses I think if we really wanted to, to, to do something out of the box that other states will look at and say this is the way to do it We've got the best distance learning program in the country, our access program. We ought to set it up so that, that if these uh, prisoners, who are eligible for parole, by the way, they're going to get out, uh, would enroll and get their high school diploma. It's not a GED when you go through access. Get their high school diploma, they'd immediately be eligible for parole. If they've got a high school degree, they could enroll in a program that allow them to get an associate's degree or, or get a uh, vocational uh, uh, degree, a technical degree. And once they get it, they'd immediately be eligible for parole. Not only would you reduce the number of people in prison, but when these people were released, they would have employable skills. Uh, I think they'd have a better attitude, they'd be more hopeful, and I think the recidivism rates would, would be dramatically lower. And over time, that solves a lot of your problems, and funding that, and, and that, otherwise. Yeah, it reduces the number of people in prison, it uh, reduces the cost, and it uh, also uh, allows us to help people uh, get reintegrated into, into society in a way where, where they've got dignity, uh, you know, to get a job and, and, to, and to be able to provide for the family uh, would really make a huge difference. Excellent. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. We covered a broad range of topics. I know it's been a busy month for you and will continue to stay busy, but thanks for your time. Thanks, Jonathan, for having me. Appreciate it.